So, back on the BF um, spindle cartridge that I pulled apart before. Apologies, it has been eight months, unbelievably, um, since I initially took this apart. But I'm looking at going to get this reground on the taper wire this apart, so I need to get the other bearings off. If you look back at the previous video, video um, opening up a half spindle, you'll see I finally got to this stage, showed you how I've got here. Now I'm looking at taking the actual bearings off of the spindle cylinder itself. Um, and taking a look at it, it seems to me that this is a top hat. Obviously this goes up against the shoulder of these bearings here, or the inner race. And this here is all one piece. You can see where that's been turned. Um, and then you've got a circle clip groove inside. But if you look, if I can get a light in there, it seems like that's where it's separate. So I think this is a press fit, shrink fit, top hat that is pushed down to compress uh, and hold on the bearings. And then you've obviously got your spacers in there. So you, you can't grab or pull or push on this because this is the part that you're trying to get off. So I'm thinking that if you can see right down right down inside there excuse me right down inside there is a shoulder um, or like counterboard section that if I take this 32 mil bar which basically imitates the draw tube it will sit down on a hard stop let's try and look from the other end you'll see clearer you can see it sits down in there so what we're going to try and do is put this in the press, rest some blocks underneath these bearings and then press down on here and then hopefully that will remove this top hat section. So I'm going to put this in the fly press and we'll have a look and see if that works. Right, so I've got it through the middle of the fly press and I'm resting it on these old um, steel jaws and I've put this under here, because obviously whenever it comes out, it's just gonna fall. Got a bit of alley in there. So I'm thinking this top hat and these bearings, this will all push off in one piece. But I don't know how, I haven't got much clearance there to put anything on it. So I don't know how tight it's gonna be. So, sounds like movement. Right. Right, so that bit is actually separate. I think that was one piece, which means this collar could have been pulled off. But this works to come off in one piece. It still, it still works, just means I could have actually pressed on here. But you can see there, it's not, not taking much force before it actually drops out. Something else I can put in there. Something like that'll do. Anytime. He says. There we go. That's why we put the big cloth there and the kneeling pad, and that bit is just a little spacer. Right. Let's take these back over here. I say I was out of travel. I wasn't out of travel. This was just adjusted to a stop for a job I was doing the other day. So let's bring the spindle back over here. And move the housing out of the way. And that. Nose covers. Right, so that wasn't really required, so we can get rid of that. 
and now here we are again right so i thought this center section was a spacer but it's not that's actually part of the main body same as that so i'm not sure what that step is in there or maybe it's just a machined counterbore in there it's hard to tell from this angle obviously this is for your circuit for your draw bar so here's the top end bearings So there's your collar and these two bearings. Now these felt okay to be fair on the top end and you see they've still got a bit of grease in them. Um, but of course when you're doing it all there's no point reusing them because it's just go to that effort to not do it. But these are the two that are bad. So we've got these out. Now I'm going to have a look at this and then I'll, um, I'll work out how we're going to press it to get the actual main bearings and the main collar. I'm not sure if it's going to be heated or whether I'm just going to be able to um, press it. But I'll have a look at that and I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so I had to go the rest of the spindle collar. Um, but it seems that it's such a tight fit, it's obviously um, heated and then dropped on to the shaft, in which case it's then shrunk and it's bit. It's probably been on there a long time. And as you can see, that shaft is quite rusty. Um, or the collar, shall I say, is quite rusty. So it's not coming off. Now I tried your... Um, like your run-of-the-mill map gas that you can get and that didn't do any good and I had it in this press and it won't fit in the fly press so this press obviously was more for like a broaching style the arbor press so there's no real forces behind it so it's only good for light pressing but what I'm going to try is this press and we've come back to oxypropane so we've got an oxypropane set up there we already had plenty of propane but I had to go and rent the oxygen which isn't very expensive it's about £30 for one month, um, maybe 40 including their fees and stuff. That's from BOC in the UK. And to try and help the situation, yesterday we put the spindle in the freezer. So this has been in the freezer. Now I just mic'd it down here. Now at ambient temperature, temperature that is 50.01 mm and that's been in there overnight and I mic'd it again and it's 49.98 so it shrunk by 0.03 mm um, and hopefully that'll be enough so the whole lot including the collar is obviously um, chilled and I think the freezer set to minus 23 degrees so there or thereabouts so I'm going to take it out I'm going to sit it on the V blocks in the press and then I'm going to press on the top of it whilst trying to heat it as quick as I can with the oxypropane. So I'm going to plonk you on the table here. Now as soon as the torch is lit up, as soon as the torch is lit up, I'm probably going to lose the audio which is never the best anyway so apologies for that. Um, and I'm no expert in these so if you're going to use anything like this, um, take care and make sure you've got someone who knows what they're doing. I've used it a few times, um, it normally takes me a while to get going before I light it in the flame out so bear with me with that but as said you'll probably lose the audio so I'll probably cut it off but let's see if it works it's now gone seven feet for it now We had a bit of movement a minute ago, it seems we don't now.
Take you out of there. I'm absolutely sweating now. I think through nerves as much as through heat. So what we're smoking there is these have a phenolic cage, which is obviously cooked and fully cremated and disappeared, hence all the smoke. And then down here is the spindle. Now the question is, that kind of wipes off there. I don't know, hopefully we haven't got that too hot to cause any damage, but there you go. She is out. To be fair, that is a lot of work. If I'd have used the bigger nozzle, that bigger heating nozzle, first off, when the whole shaft was fresh out of the freezer, um, because I tried that one first, the small nozzle first, I think it was a number 10, and then I come to this one, I think if I'd have used this one first, and had somebody else on the handle of the arbor press, I would have been able to do that without getting that spindle shaft so hot. But the bearings are off, we're gonna let all this cool down. Um, once it's cooled down, and I'll give it a clean up, and I know I can touch it without burning myself, I'll bring you back and I'll, we'll have a look what's what. Although saying that, I don't think you're really gonna see much in the bearings now that phenolic cage um, is completely gone. So we shall see. Okay, so we've got everything stripped down. Um, apologies about the audio. I must get myself a proper microphone because when there's machines running and I'm trying to use, normally I try and use um, an earphone headpiece with a microphone on it or I'm holding the camera. I try not to, but I always end up blocking the speaker um, or the microphone on the actual camera itself, the phone itself, um, and the audio goes high and low. So it was quite bad in the last um, couple of clips, so apologies for that, but you couldn't hear much over the, um, the propane torch anyway, so just to go back onto removing that uh, shrink fit collar, we ended up using the larger nozzle on the propane torch here, so we used one of these larger nozzles because the smaller welding tips didn't heat it um, as much as I thought it would quick enough, so we ended up getting hot across the whole shaft. Um, whereas this actually done it really quick and it expanded um, perfectly and became loose. So if I'd have used this nozzle when the shaft was fresh out of the freezer, um, it would have been a lot easier to remove that collar. But never, no, nevertheless, we done it. Um, it's off, so it can be done with one of you, but I advise two people. Because if I'd have had someone else on the press whilst I was heating it, it would have been a lot easier. So two people and a bigger heating nozzle on the propane torch. Again, oxypropane is what I'm using. Um, obviously, acetylene, if you've got that available, then fair enough. Um, so yes, here is the spindle shaft. So this shoulder up here is where the top bearings sit. And the top bearing, so this is a 40 taper belt drive spindle. This is from um, the VF3 machine. And it's the same spindle that was out of the VF0E. So I'm guessing until you get to the super speeds or the 50 taper, these are all going to be generic. So the top bearings, which are your support ones, the part number for them, these are all NSK bearings that were on this spindle. So the part number is 7010CTRDULP3. Now I can't remember all the figures and what ones mean what exactly. I do know that the part numbers relate to this having a phenolic bearing cage um, and it also says the L is for light preload and the P3 I think is a tolerance, I can't remember. So you've got 7010 CTR DULP3, they are the top bearings um, and if I get my vernier. Um, 
pounds for a 16 millimeter thickness and they're 50 millimeter ID with 80 millimeter OD and they're the support bearings. Now these are available for about 300 um, to 350 pounds depending on where you look and where you buy them. But in the UK, there's places like Simply Bearings, uh, Bearing King, places like that. Now, I've actually managed to find a set of these that were on eBay, um, exactly the same, NSK, same part number, um, and they were new old stock. Someone had them on there for £120, and I made a cheeky offer for £60, and they accepted. So I've got them, they'll probably be here today, uh, got them ones for 60 quid. so that's good. This smaller collar is what sits over those bearings. Um, once they're on, this collar was a light press fit over the top. That came off quite easy. Now, down the bottom where we had the other collar, which is where um, it gets difficult, you have one bearing go on first, then you've got an inner collar, which will come down and slip over, which is just a slip fit. It's not tight, it's not meant to be tight, it's just a spacer. So you have bearing, spacer, then you have an outer spacer which sits over so one matches the bearing in a race one matches the bearing out of race then down will go your second bearing and then of course this is when you'll slide the collar on now this one you can see the state of that this is the bit that was really rusty it's nice and lovely machined inside but the od is just like it was a bit of black iron bar rather than anything nice and smooth they're not stainless steel um, none of the spaces or the shaft is obviously stainless steel so once that bearing stack is on is this collar which is then have to be heated and will come down over the shaft it slides over this section but it's a press fit here so this i'm guessing is where when you're heated you're going to have to put some preload on it but not too much and i suppose there's a bit of a black art and that's when the professionals come into play because I don't know um, if there's any way you can work out how you're meant to do a preload yourself. I'm not that clever of how that works. But yes, you'd have to push this collar on and just give it a certain amount of preload in the press whilst it cools down, which isn't going to take long. Um, and then it's going to hold that bearing in place, in place with the preload on it. So that's the components you need. Now for the main bearings, again, these are NSK. Again, they've got a phenolic um, bearing cage, and the part number for these ones is 7012 CTR DULP3. So again, phenolic cage, um, light preload bearing. NSK is the brand. So this one here, one that was closest to the top, getting all the heat, you can see there's nothing, um, there's no cage left in it because it pretty much burnt out when I heated it up so much. This one's got more cage left, but it's all broken up. But these were all rusty, so I think the problem being for this spindle was in the previous shot that there must have been water in the air supply um, because I can't see any other way that it could have got that contaminated. These spindle bearings could have been that bad. And obviously this machine, I'm pretty sure for most of its life, or at least the last, um, good amount of years he'd done drilling and tapping on cast iron and they were big drills and big taps um, when I went and viewed the machine they were using like one or one and a half inch taps so it's tapping slowly but there's obviously a lot of force going up and down into the spindle which has helped to wear the bearings out and then together that with um, moisture in the air supply I suppose that's it the bearings are done but for what they were using it for it didn't matter because everything was at sort of 50 RPM, 200 RPM, didn't matter to them. So yes, these bearings here, 7012 CTR DULP3 NSK bearings. Now I found these online. Um, there's plenty of places that sell these. Again, in the UK, Simply Bearings, uh, Bearing King, and there is a lot of other places that stock these. But price-wise, these can range anywhere from 320 pounds plus fat to 600 pounds plus fat so i've just gone for the exact same part number and i think the cheapest place i see online was bearing king and they were 320 pounds plus fat so 
not crazy price, so I will get some of them at a later date. I'm not going to do it yet, because I'll be honest with you, it's been a pretty bad month, um, and I don't want to chuck out any more money just yet. It's not quite time for me, so unfortunately the video is going to have to sort of stay here for a while. Now, regards... should learn to turn that air compressor off before the video. So regards to the actual spindle itself, everything looks okay, the drive dogs are okay, they've got a few dings and a few marks, but nothing major, nothing that I want to get fixed. But I am going to look at having a tape around inside this. Now I spoke to a couple of places, um, one that was called Spindle, uh, Spindle Rebuild or Spindle Services in the UK, and the other one I think was Midland Machine Tools. Now both of those offer a spindle regrind service, so I'm not going to have someone else rebuild it. I'd really like to. I just don't have that sort of money um, at the moment. So I'm thinking I'll build it myself for the price of the bearings. If it doesn't work and the bearings get cooked or something goes wrong, it's going to cost me, well, it's going to waste around £400. Now, I don't want to waste £400 because it's still 400 quid, but that's not so bad. I haven't got 3800 I think it was, to get the spindle rebuilt by them professionally. I'm not saying it's not worth the money, I just, I just can't afford that. So I'm going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. So a taper regrind, if everything else is okay, just to regrind the taper on one of these, from the two companies there was about £120 difference between the two. So one was £140 plus that if I send them this stripped down shaft and they regrind this BT40 taper back into tolerance. Um, and for that money it's a peace of mind. The other one... That was one company, £140. The other one was around £280. So, um, like I say, around £100, £140 difference between the two. So, it's still not a massive amount, and I don't think this is worth putting back in without grinding it, just for peace of mind. So, that's what I'm going to do. But they did say to me, if, it's, if the gauge line is not within tolerance, then the... Um, shaft would have to be pre-ground, then hard chrome, and then re-ground afterwards, and that raised the price quite a lot to about £760, I think, or £680, let's say £700 roughly, plus VAT, um, and it put the turnaround time up to one month from four to five days. But I have here a BT40 taper gauge, which I bought um, just off eBay ages ago, and it's got a small step in it there, which is like your maximum point of contact where it goes into the taper. And if you see here, if I put that in there, you can see I'm still, still got quite a way to go before we're in. So there's no way that this taper is um, already worn or ground too far back. And I wanted to check that because no offence to the company. Um, obviously they're going to check it and I didn't want to send it off thinking I'm going to get a £150 bill or a £250 bill and get a £700 bill. So I had this already. I didn't have to go and buy it and it is a proper gauge. Um, so while I'm here, I'm able to check this. So we're going to get this sent off. We're going to get it ground. I'm going to wait till I've got a bit of spare cash and I'll buy these bearings. And then in the meantime, I'm going to work out and do a little bit of research, mostly online probably, um, or if any of you guys know, please let me know because this is all new to me. That when I put these bearings back on, what am I checking and what needs to be um, measured to make sure everything's good? Because there's, there's no set shoulder where this all sits, I'm guessing this stack height, as long as the inner and outer are the same, I guess you don't want these to be different thicknesses, so I'll have to mic with the thickness of that and then mic with the thickness of the outer one. Where the bearings sit, I assume it's only when I'm pushing down when I push down on the inner and outer. I guess you just push down on the inner. You're going to compress it to a point. You don't want to go too far. So this is new to me, and I don't know exactly how much load or if there's anything else I should be doing in regards to having these checked or whether you have to get new ones. I do not know. That's where the experts are coming. I'm going to try and do some research online and find out what's wrong. So for the minute, we'll leave it there. 
if you like the content, please like and subscribe to the channel. But um, apologies for the fact that it took eight months for me to get to this point. But I have to do the other work and this guy that took the back seat. Now, one last thing I wanted to add. The spindle that's currently in the, um, the VF3, if any of you guys watch the previous videos, you'll remember that the spindle was, that's in there now running was removed from a, a machine that I scrapped for spares. And the spindle bearings themselves are okay, but the tape sticks really badly and the tools get stuck. So on almost every job, which is annoying, but it's doable, I have to run optional stop. And when the tool change comes in, I'll go over there with a copper mallet and as it tool changes, I'll be standing there and it will get stuck. And I just ding, and you only have to give it a small tap and then it will release. If I don't do that, it'll alarm out because the tool won't come out. Um, I asked the same companies, or I asked one of them, can't remember which one, can you regrind a spindle taper whilst it is built up in the cartridge housing? Now bear in mind the bearings are sealed from the top and bottom caps, so nothing can get into them when they're grinding, so there's no risk of that. But they said yes they can if I remove the drawbar, so that they've got um, clear access, and then I'm guessing they can centre on the end here, and um, they'll, they'll balance it out and put something on the end of this that is here should be true to that. Um, they can grind it built up. It was slightly dearer. It was around, again, I think one company was double the other one. So one company was about £280 and one was about £480, uh, £500, to grind it built up in its housing. And by in its housing, I'll show you. Here is the housing spindle so you can send them this with your spindle inside of it everything in there with your bearings your caps on the whole lot all built up and they can grind it like that they said that is possible so um, they've done it before but the price is dear now because the spindle in the vf3 the bearings are good it's not making any noise it's not getting hot or anything like that i think they're okay i may for that price of probably use the cheaper company because I'll give it a go and see what happens. For that price of say £300 plus that, at some point I may send them off the whole thing because it's very quick to remove this. You could remove this from the machine in half an hour. I may send that one off and just get it ground because that could solve the spindle um, tool sticking problem and that's all I need. Um, if I can solve that issue, then I'll be quite happy. So Then I'll have one built up and one with uh, just the tape regrinding. But we'll see. So yes, once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. We'll see you again soon.